Hey, 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 today, day, day, we are back on the Model A, A, A. That is right. At the beginning of the year, we start kind of thrashing on the old Model A here. We had a deadline of getting it to the Lone Star Roundup, which we made as a mocked up hot rod, uh, but there's still plenty to do here. Now our Model A, this thing is set up on a Bolin Brothers chassis, uh, including a nine inch rear end, nice little dropped axle up front, Bolin Brother brakes, all kinds of good stuff. For the drivetrain, we went with the small block Chevy, just a crate 350, and uh, backed it by 700 R4 transmission. We did a little custom fabrication up in this situation. Inside, we had to build some floors front to back, a removing them removable transmission tunnel and we even whipped up a custom firewall with the help of old slick 50 of the ok speed and custom now as far as the styling of the car well we went a little traditional hot rod influence on it okay so as far as our color combos the black with that greenish grayish bluish is already a killer looking color on it so to really to just tie all that together you can't go wrong with some 40 style steel wheels and some bias ply looking tires so that kind of gets you caught up to where we're at and what we did to kind of get to this point, sort of, kind of, maybe. Uh, the problem is she's not DUN, she is not done. Her ultimate goal here, we well, wanted to get it running and driving. Two, she still needs a hood on it. Three, we are gonna run center caps, but to be actually running and driving, we still have a lot to go. Motor needs hooked up, transmission needs hooked up. She needs a drive shaft, those are kind of important, and a whole list of other things that I forgot because it's been too long. She has brakes. That's a plus. She may not go, but she can stop. And she can steer. By golly, she can steer. So that's what I'm doing, guys. We're getting back on it. I wish I could tell you exactly what we're going to get done in this video, but I cannot. I did kind of make a list as we were going of stuff that I would know we would need to do. Diff fluid, four-link nylock pinions, adjust brakes, trans ass. That trans just made an ass out of itself. Alignment, front hardware, cotter pin torque. I don't even know what half that stuff means. Uh, so what we're gonna do is just dive in in this thing and get going on it. I'm gonna start knocking out what I know we need to knock out. And then I'm sure we'll come across what else we need to do as we go. And we'll just get done whatever we can get dead. Going up. <laughs> If only someone had a lift, we could pick this car up with. We could probably shimmy underneath there. Actually, let's get the front up too. I can lower cars. Easiest way to get the fronts to run true duels. Alright. Oh shoot. I thought we were I thought we were sitting level. She's pulling a wheelie. Ha ha! Got a couple of her six tons. Be sure to put you a little uh, paper. What the heck? Where did that just shoot from? Not paper towel, regular towel. You don't want to scratch up your paint. We did the same on the rear. We could take that higher if we needed to in the rear, level it out. So why am I not using the lift? Uh, one, it's not as easy to get this thing positioned where I'd be happy with it with those arms. And don't forget this thing sitting really low. We have running boards that sit down lower than anything else by a lot. And I'd rather not just tear up the car. Also, I have a feeling when we get to building these lines and doing some of the wiring, we're gonna be needing to go from the inside to the bottom side. And yes, I understand the lift goes up and down, but it's also a lot faster if you can get into both without doing that. So we're just gonna see what we can get done. Uh, let's get a tape measure, some calipers, maybe a light and do the shimmy up underneath here. Shimmy, 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 shimmy. Right there is our output shaft. And right here's our big old yoke. We're gonna need to do some measuring to figure out uh, 
what drive shaft we need to order. If you're gonna measure, you wanna do it like this with some weight on that suspension. Don't jack your frame up and let your axle droop or whatever, and then try to measure it. You'll be in bad shape. Southwest speed, I think they have you measure from the very back of that right to that flange, and ours is perfect, 30 and a half. Depending on who's gonna do your drive shaft, you need to check with them and see uh, how they want you to measure it. Some people are all a little different. All right. We'll measure across inside here, and mm, about 1.06 uh, inches. So I don't have you joints memorized, but we can look them up. Uh, besides that, we'll need to know the width from that little lip right there to this lip right here. Three point two two ish three point two two ish official answer so if you google u u joint size chart you can see they'll give you the size of the caps then the widths 1.062 that's for a 1310 and a 1330 which that's pretty close to what i measured and then i said 3.22 ish and that one is a 3.219 I'd say that's pretty dang close. So we got a 1310, or we need a 1310 U-joint. So that information, we know we're going to 700 R4, we know our length, we know our U-joint. I'm gonna call and get us a drive shaft ordered. All right, I messed up on my measurements. I went from the tail, the output shaft, when really I should've went from like the transmission seal, whatever. I checked before I called though, so with that measurement, it was 31 and an eighth. I'm not sponsored. This ain't a paid promotion or nothing. Uh, Southwest Speed, those guys right there, I've used them for a drive shaft before. I just called and was on the phone for two minutes. In two minutes I called, they keep those things in stock, built to certain lengths. They'll figure out which one's gonna work for you. He said it's going in the mail today. We're gonna have it tomorrow, guys. I used them for my travel all. I ordered it one day at five, like right before they closed at five o'clock in the evening. It showed up the next day at 11.59. They don't play when it comes to customer service. Hopefully it's the right sleep yoke. All, I guess all their drive shafts are 27 spline on the uh, yoke and then 1310 U-joints, which is what we had. So we should be good. These two bolts holding on our grill shell is gonna be the devil to get out of here. We need another, need another set of hands. Here's a little pro tip for you. If you're gonna try to get that by yourself, you better have your distributor wrench to wiggle up in there. Lucky there. Guys, this is a problem with uh, doing like a mock-up to take it to the show. Now to actually go forward, we gotta go backwards a little bit where we can uh, start actually doing some fixing. Woo -hoo, woo -hoo, woo -hoo. It gets a little rickety. And these are a little trickety to get out of here. In fact, I don't even know how to get it out of there because it's like wedged underneath these. We ain't pulling fenders. Maybe we let that pop up. The bracket's like right there. Then the chrome shell's only about three sixteenths of an inch above it. The lip on that apron is over a quarter inch. Don't fit. The only way we ever got it out before was uh, taking a whole car apart. Can we get it off here by removing the grill shell from the actual radiator? Stay tuned to find out. Oh, I see. Dang, you just drop that down on there and a couple set screws wedge it. A chunk of rubber seals it. Let's see, four flight head screws we're gonna have to get. For one down low, has some type of resistor mounted to it as well. 
using these little stubby screwdrivers is always my favorite. They bring so much joy to my life and happiness. <laughs> Hmm. I bet this is for, yep. I bet this is to drop your 12 volts down to six volts for the headlights to not burn them up, maybe. Huh? Oh, -ho! whoa, there we go. It's gotta be smarter than a grill shell. That is an absolute girthy unit of a radiator. Now, what do we have or don't have? That's what we're gonna have to start working through. Uh, I'm kind of half lost, like I'd said. Uh, I did buy a alternator bracket from the Speedway. And this here should be a true one wire alternator grounding tab. To properly ground this alternator, attach a 10 gauge wire from this tab to the engine block frame or negative battery post. I should say to properly make this ugly as hell, put a big old wire looped on top of it. No instructions, but we don't need them. Mm. Hey, that all kind of lines up. Uh-huh. Thought that was supposed to go there, but we weren't lining up exactly. Hmm. Installation tip. Due to variations in water pump and intake, it may be necessary to shim the upper alternator bracket for proper alignment. <laughs> the bracket has been jig drilled and hole is placement correct. They're tired of people calling them. <laughs> this is why kits like these are fun. So we're gonna go with our little spacer sitting up there. Bloop, plop that there. Our water pump bolt, we're gonna move to the upper and then it came with a longer bolt we're gonna move down here. Half the fun of the kit's figuring out how to install it. Where's this supercharger gonna sit? So just looking at it, I could tell our bracket was tweaked. That spacer is actually supposed to be on here. Then that actually fits in the other bracket. Don't worry, she came with about 14,000 washers. So I'm like, oh, that's what they mean by shims, huh? Like maybe we'll tighten this down and then see how much we need in there. The only problem is then that, that ain't lining up like at all. So we gotta shim it behind here pull it out this way and then underneath there apparently and then is it even going to actually line up with a belt who knows to make this kit work you either got to be a hillbilly or smarter than me there ain't enough washers in that kit so i space that out with a nut for a 7 16 bolt that seems to be just about right three washers underneath there seem to be just about right so now I'm gonna mock up the rest and we'll have to check some belt alignment. We need fine thread bolts for in there. These pulleys are from the Speedway as well. Kinda just hoping coming from the same uh, same company, maybe it'll all work together. Feel like we have a better chance anyhow. Be honest, all the people who sell it probably get it from the same place in China. Ow, <laughs> ow, be careful when that sucks that back. You probably don't want your finger back there. Yee doggy, perk near rubbing. All right, let's give her the eagle eye. Looks pretty dang good. Uh, hmm. Actually, that alternator looks forward. Or does it? Mmm. Ah. I was gonna say it's a little bit of an angle, but that will probably change when we tighten that up some. This belt is not for this. It's just one we have left over from the Lodestar video. Uh, let's just kind of wrap this on there and see. Don't look too bad. I don't know how that's supposed to work. Our belt engages on both sides of the pulley, but it'd be rotating the right direction, so I don't see why it wouldn't work. Nope. Another pulley I have is the exact same size, so that'll do us no good. I think we're gonna just try to run this setup, guys. I don't think that possibly getting in there is gonna matter. 
This right here is uh, the almost as fun as making a kit work. Then you get to figure out which belt you need. And then lengths are based off, uh, is it a V belt or this belt and that size or that size, like lengths change, whatever. I mark that. I'm gonna have my parts lady look up this part number, say the overall, it'll tell you the overall outside length between my two marks there. We're gonna measure that. I'm gonna tell her subtract that amount from whatever the total is and then get me the belt closest to that and that's gonna be her baseline. It's probably gonna be wrong. But after that, it'll probably be wrong the second time. And then we'll probably try our third belt and we might get it by the fourth. Belt is on order. Now this looked good mocked up on there. Only problem is she would probably vacuum leak a little bit. Once again, this was just more a uh, mock up for the car show for it to look good. Ha <laughs> ha! We're gonna be putting a LD Brock on here. Here's my list of stuff I need to get, by the way. These being local. If you see a dash, that's local. If you see a star, it's online. All right, here we've got the Elderbrock 1406. That means she's gonna be the electric choke model. This we will not be using, or we may use it. I'm hoping we can figure out something a little more classic looking than that. Uh, I don't know why I'm worried about the classic look as we put an Elderbrock on an engine. These may not be the most traditional carburetors, but dang, do they work good. They're reliable. Guys, if you're just building a driver, cruiser, decent power, decent gas mileage combo thing, this is it. Now, if you want high performance, I'm not saying I would go with one of these, uh, but we're not going for high performance. Plop, get in here. What are you huffing and puffing for? It's only 102 out. You hot or something? Get you some water. Do you have a 700 R4? Do you got a LD Brock transmission? Well, you, my friends, will need this little sucker here. Mm hmm. That kind of interlocks to that, you see? And that little Allen bolt's gonna retain it. Yeah! I ain't gonna harp on it too much. Maybe I am. Uh, the position of your 700 R4. TV cable is very important. If you do not have all this geometry right, you can burn up your transmission. 700 R4 catch a really bad rip. People burn them up left and right. I've had four of them. Every one of them's burn up. I, I don't know what's wrong with it. And then you find out they're test driving them and never even hooking up a TV cable. Hmm, that's funky. I've put tons of them in vehicles, have never lost one. Find your reputable, rep, reputable builder set the tv cable up correctly make sure it has a decent cooler you shouldn't have no problems oh that don't mean you can tow a trailer house and or you should then try to put as much power to you can and go do a bunch of launches you know and break the damn thing that's like people in 4l60s those transmissions are junk you find out they built a motor up to like who knows, 600 horsepower. They welded the rear end solid, put drag slicks on it, and went out there, and well, something had to break. <laughs> I've towed with mine. I've driven the crap out. I've not, the, the one in the Yukon slipped at 177,000 miles. Maybe I just have good luck with them, and y'all have bad luck with them. I don't know. So speaking of that old pesky TV cable right there, you can see I already got a little bracket on there. Y'all seen me take factory ones and cut them up and modify them to work. This one I seen online, cheap little set. It's kind of universal-ish. You can see how that bracket goes on there. We gotta check and make sure that's gonna be about correct with that. Uh, yeah, that's pretty dang good. I'm checking to make sure they're in line with each other level. You don't want one down here, one up here where it's pulling at an angle. Do you think that right there would work good for us? I'm gonna mock us up two bolts in there, but we ain't gonna get too wild with it. We actually need to get the floor out of this rig, and then uh, we can start looking at the transmission side of things. Tiny hardware. <laughs> Almost as fun as kits and belts. Yeah! Yeah! I heard that. Jeez Louise, Nathan. 
I thought a big old bumblebee was outside. Just that little red bumblebee. Hmm, how fancy. Come on. Come on. First time removing it with the rubber seals. I was hoping they were all gonna stay in place. They look like they did. Now, what do we got going on in here? Uh, for one, we need to build some cooler lines. Ooh, those ones are rattle can to match high performance. All right, here's where our TV cable goes. You can see there's a little, little spring, not a spring, it's a hook. Also, there is already a grommet in here, but there's also one on here. You do not want to do a double seal. One, it's probably going to fit. Two, it ain't going to help you seal by having two. Let's make sure... Yeah, that fits that nice. I'm gonna put this one back in. That's what came with our rebuild kit, apparently. Probably a little nicer quality than this cheap one. Pull that up out of there. It just hooks onto that. And don't click, actually just slides on there. Then once you go down in there, that makes it work, can't come off. And we need our retaining bolt. <clears throat> Snugga lugga. With that side down there happy up here. Oh. Tighten these up for cable. I always like to pull it as tight as it can go. We want to loosen our stopper up where we can adjust it. And then all at the same time, we got to take the carburetor to wide open throttle with that on there, then put our stopper down. I need four more hands. Or we can click that, take that, pull that, do that. And I still need four more hands. What if we take that to wide open throttle and zip tie it? That's thinking with your noggin. So give me some fin. Noggin. Dude. Uh oh. Our cheap uh, TV cable just pulled through. That ain't good. Yeah. With that set now, I should be set just about right. Let's see, this thing's gonna be a problem. I can already tell. We're gonna have to get a different TV cable. I ordered that one online with the other stuff. It's too cheap made. Uh, that little thing keeps letting that slip, which will mean we'll lose our adjustment and we'll be burning up the transmission. However, that's how you set one up. I'll order us one, get us a better one, and we'll just swap her out real quick at some point tomorrow. Uh, goodness, five o'clock already. Good morning, back on her. Our throttle rod I had built here, uh, I'm looking at getting it hooked up, so I put us a mark right there, lining up with that hole. Like if we were to go vroom, vroom. Uh, that's plenty far back enough. May not, let's see if we can find that end. We're gonna try to make this work, it may not work, we may have to come up with something else what we're looking for the goals to land right in there and then we're gonna cut her right in there and thread all that that's brass you save it for your good scrap pile high dollar stuff gonna cut some 10 30 seconds threads on this bad girl Pretty. You can't even focus on it. Dang GoPro. We may end up, I can't tell if it's gonna work or not. This is a little things in a build, guys. We can spend an easy hour trying to get a throttle rod just how we want it. We probably should have made a cable work from the start. There, I said it. Our cap here, uh, I tried to put us just a little dab of grease down in the bottom. That went real well. And I got her kind of lined up where I like it. Uh, Right there, we are getting full throttle. I put a little slit in this end, about like so. And we're gonna try putting that on there as a grommet. Stupid, stupid, stupid. That was a stupid idea from the start. Should've never done it. The problem is, we're going through right on that compound curve. Meaning right here, so mounting a cable would be tricky. And as far as this, we don't wanna weld on anything or butcher our paint or our coating. 
we could attach to this somehow. I guess I'm gonna have to figure out some type of cable and how to make it work. Obviously, that'd be the best bet. That throttle, the rod's binding some. It's bottoming them out. That rubber seal's just gonna stay split open. Then you'll be letting all your hot air through there. And this thing's pretty well sealed up. Good, we did a good job on it. So just can't leave it. Should have, should have fixed it right from the start. And this, my friends, is the difference of a real deal build. Like the Yeehaw, I don't consider that a build, guys. We, uh, when we hooked up throttle on that, I just whipped up a couple little brackets. We didn't even paint them. I welded them on, made this throttle cable work. It kind of looks like hell, but it does the job great. And that's perfect for the Yeehaw, but we can't call a Yeehaw a build in comparison to this thing, okay? This thing's way more work. Has to be where I'm really, really happy with it. And then obviously if you're doing like some little run crap and we rigged up something like that, we'd be stoked, hey, it's working. Let's go do some donuts in the field. But that's not what we're doing here. There's a difference. And this one takes the most time out of all of them. And I hate that <laughs> on YouTube. That's why I like, I see people always comparing builders and I'm like, well, what build are you gonna compare with the builder? You can't just say like, don't say I do the same thing because I mean, we work on a lot of the same kind of stuff, but rigging together will it run versus building something like this where every nut and bolt, whatever's being pulled on it, there's a difference. There's builders on YouTube I don't want to compete with. They, this is all they do is high-end stuff. I like kind of being the mix. But on this one, we got to get her right, get her tight, get her where I can sleep at night. Saying that just got me thinking. I did the same uh, cable swap on our half haul. And as far as rigging one up, the cable clicked up in here, clicks into there. I already disconnected that. She's real short, which is exactly what we need is a short one. And then popped it out of there. I just need to get this off and we're gonna see if we can make this work. If this will work, you can get these brand new, no problem. This may be a hair too long. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just as I suspected. We may be able to make that work. I ordered, ordered us a new one, because on this one, I did do some grinding and stuff to make it work on there. We're gonna get a fresh one for a fresh start. We may get throttle cycling at some point in the next three months. Moving forward with our carburetor fuel system, whatever. I really like this air breather on our carburetor, but this does not work with our new carburetor, so we're gonna make it work. Sitting right here, I actually have a base plate from another breather. Hopefully with a little cutting and a little welding, we can make this work. Eagle eye action. Just a beautiful butchering cut. Do not fear, we got a belt sander right over here. Right here, my friends, we have created the world's smallest velocity stack. We about to just send that baby like that. Whom, whom, cut it off. bare metal that so when we drop that there we can mark it out and one be able to see two it'll be ready to weld being bare metal two birds one stone we just need to get her pretty centered which is about in there and i need to do a little better so draw me a line here to be able to index it and we're just gonna trace that sucker out. And we need to trim up to the inside of our trace line because we marked it on the outside of this. Slow and steady. Oh, I need to go further in. I already butchered us up right there. 
I was focusing too much up there, wasn't looking at the hind end. I went out past our line. Dang it! Slow and steady. <laughs> Too shabby. Match our edges up. A few tacks all the way around. We'll go for a quick little mock-up before we full commit. Well, if that works, that was easy enough. Just want to make sure we're going to be able to clear stuff. It ain't sitting too high. Ain't sitting too low. We got to be able to get something on our fuel line there. We got clearance stuff over here and he's be able to cycle underneath there which it can however it's sitting about as low as it can without causing problems which is perfect we don't want it to sit way up like a dang old top hat tip top cherry yo we want our, we want that old hat pulled down that's perfect literally perfect we couldn't have calculated measure lated used mathematics and geometries and anything else and got it more perfect than what it is right there Bad mama, shut your mouth. Welder it. With how that sits, guys, obviously you can never see the bottom of that. Uh, the weld don't look terrible by any means. We could definitely paint it just like that. I'm trying to decide if I want to clean the weld up. Use the 80 grit roll lock, got down in there, knocked most of the weld off. Once that's done, went over with a scotch brush roll lock. And with that, you can't even hardly tell we were ever in there. I mean, both sides look pretty darn good. Next up, a little 220. We are not gonna paint this whole thing. I'm actually okay with the condition of it. It came off a restored car. Uh, the paint quality's pretty dang good. We just want to tape off this bottom where we can get some black paint down on it. And that will be, well, we'll dust a little on the inside too. That'll be good enough for where we're headed. Corporate pudding present arms, other arms. Steady, march. Right face, whoo. Corporal pudding, give her hell. What you think about that, Theo? Excuse me, sir. Oh yeah, new owner. You, you couldn't go anywhere where you didn't have air, air conditioning now, you little spoiled thing. We're gonna get our primer shook up here. And uh, this is good stuff. She's so the rattle pan with the flame. She lays down nice, especially after being mixed up nice. Spend your time to shake this stuff up, you'll love the results. Figured we'd have our parts by now, but we do not. Uh, I bought a flexible dipstick online. We're gonna see if we can make this baby work. A little lube on our O-rings. I don't love how this thing looks. I've made sure to get a black one, uh, but we gotta see if we can finagle it down in there. And where can we mount it? be very surprised if that don't leak just went in so easy 
I they use O-rings. They should use that big old seal like what was kind of on our TV cable. <gasps> We're on the forbidden side, the plastic side. Yeah. One of these right here. That ain't gonna fit that. Way too big. It'll seal or it won't. Yeah. <laughs> I got a plan. I don't know if it's a good plan, but it's a plan. Oh, that's when them PFT connections or whatever. But bracket here. She's so gonna need to be flipped backwards. Little mock up. Here's why. With that flip backwards, uh, looks where that look where that hole happens to line up at, huh? Can you smell what I'm thinking? And we obviously don't want that hanging out there. That would look tacky. So we need to do a little trimming. We need to take uh, this side of the bracket off. Maybe we'll put these on the paper thin gloves, you know. Nice looking bracket right there. It's gonna look like it was actually made for it instead of having that old ear hanging off. Get a little primer on that. Right here we're gonna go with our semi-gloss. This is a good color. First coat, we're going with just a little light dusting. That way it can start drying up. Stick, we'll come lay that on thicker with the second coat. Same with this show car stuff two coats instead of one <laughs> she's just a driver we just run it the first time let uh, the streaks make her sleek the runs make her fun 23 unfinished little projects everywhere we should definitely start another one here uh, our transmission cooler lines i got the stuff to try to build some hard lines got tube nut here or a bunch of tube nuts got some 5 16 uh tubing i was kind of giving her the eyeball our cooling lines or fittings are back there, so we kind of need to go and maybe hug along close right in here. That way we're above our start. Oh, well, is the starter solenoid gonna be in there? We do not want to make our lines where our starter is. For our next little project, we're gonna put the starter on. You guys want the little high torque units like what we put on the wagon. Just trying to save as much room as possible because obviously she's gonna be tight fit to uh, get some exhaust up in here. Be surprised if it has to come back off. That'll help us with our hard lines though. Yeah, solenoid right there. So good thing we did that. Good thing is we can still make it work. I do believe uh, we just need to be aware of that. If I was smart, knowing I was gonna do this, I would have ordered one of them roller things that straighten this out for you. Uh, I did not, but I have seen a trick where they will take uh, a piece of wood and drill a hole and use that to straighten it out. So we're gonna try that. So close. You ever see the cut off wheel cut wood? Oh, it'll do it. Here we go. Guess if anything, I can shove it in there. Kind of pick up on it like that and straighten her up as we go. This will probably be more useful as we get to these tighter coils down in here. I mean, shoot, that's kind of working. I 
got us two six footers. Uh, we're gonna practice flaring one of these, or I'm gonna practice and then I'll show y'all what I figure out. I ain't never done five sixteenths, so I don't know the depths and crap like that. We'd rather practice instead of messing up our two pieces we wanna use. Here's the little tester, okay? And for a comparison, I have this little pre-made line, so I was just kinda looking at it, and I'd say that looks pretty well like it. Step number one, we need a clean cut. Step number two, a little deburr. I'm gonna just do that with a drill bit because I ain't got a deburr tool. Step number three, and this was the part I was a little worried about. We gotta have some stick out for a double flare and I wasn't sure how much to stick out. Uncle Rick taught me on the 3 16ths, we go about the thickness of the little die we end up using here. So I tried the same on this one. Go about the thickness of that on our stick out and it seemed to work on that last one. Next up, our first flare, put that tool in there and we gotta smash her down. Maybe you can see that shoves all that extra material down kind of on itself. Now we're gonna hit her with uh, one more flare. Of course, that's at the angle we need, so that'll flare it out. They have super expensive tools to do this, guys. Uh, this set we're using was probably about $27 off Amazon, and uh, we have built the brakes of the Datsun, the wagon, and I'm sure some other stuff with this cheapo set. It just keeps doing just fine for us. Once we get right there, a little extra. Yeah, and I think that looks like our pre-made, so I'm happy with that. Now, do not forget to put your tube nut on there. I know I did not, but we got a whole nother end that's open, so I wasn't too worried about that. There it is. My parts order came in. We're gonna uh, practice on this pre-made 3 8 since it's kinda in the open. Get a little practice at our bending before we bend up them other ones. Just as snug as we can get, make sure your nut's there. We are going on this one for a 90. <laughs> Using these nunchucks get confusing. Uh huh. That's shoving that way out there and we've got a lower radiator hose to worry about. I don't know how we can bend that tighter. The classic vice. Yeah. Hmm, kinda kinked on it a hair. I think she'll be all right. So what's nice about these lines you can get from the parts house, this material, which I'm sure you can buy elsewhere, it, uh, it's so easy to bend and manipulate. Yeah, ow. Just use them fingers to wedge it. It'll be fine. Whoop. Kind of tucked it back in there. Give us plenty of room to work on this, hopefully. And that picks up kind of nice and straight like so. We like that. Front. We want to start bending right there. Please don't mess this up. Please don't mess this up. Catch you. Measured 17 just where I could come back and bend that up some. Where we could clear a firewall. It's looking pretty good. Looks like we need to bend up. A 90 takes about an inch and a half distance. So if we want our 90 to line up with that, then we need to start bending back here. We may be able to come straight up and then just loop that. So put a line there, knowing where to position it. Up top, I trimmed it down and uh, just got our little piece on there. Now, I know y'all's gonna give me grief about that. Someone is, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? You should have made the hard line. Whatever, that don't bother me. I'm okay with that. I'm also okay, oh, I'm also okay with realizing I just put that exactly where our dipstick's supposed to go. Installed, little bracket worked out, looks pretty good. And as 
long as that right there can feed into there, which it can. Hey, we'll take it. Low profile and clean. Boy, you take this old base that was never modified once in its life. You sit her back there. Take that old cleaner after putting some slickum back on it. Mount it off there. Get the hood sides on it where you can pop that sucker up and that's about all you can see. She will look good enough for me. Let me show you how my hard lines are going. I didn't figure y'all wanna watch me struggle with them. I put you to sleep like old Theo here. You little spoiled thing. So the hard lines are going uh, real good, as you can tell. <laughs> I was kinking the hard lines. The bends weren't even close. Uh, I'm sure I could waste a whole nother day trying to get them things right. I have one of these kits for a transmission. Kits like these is what I use on my truck to travel all other stuff. And with our real tight space, it's going to make it real easy to get it tucked up where we want it. We're just going to use this stuff. These are AM fittings. Now they make wrenches you can use where you don't booger up, whatever. I'm not too worried about that, honestly. Put that end in there. We're gonna take our hose. And I like to spin the hose counterclockwise and shove it in there. You're just trying to get it wiggled up in there. Lubing stuff up never hurts. Yeah. 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 All right, shove that in there. So you can see it bottoms out down by your threads. Some of these fittings are uh, better than others, okay? This set I bought's a cheapo set and they're going together easy. Some cheapo sets uh, will really make you work for it. Spray a little lube on our other piece here. And as that threads into that, it just wedges that out and creates a seal. All I have is straights and 90s. The 90s a tight fit, but it's gonna work and it actually just tucks it really close along the transmission. Once it gets tight, I just tighten it up so our uh, sides all match up like that and she should be good to go. Snug both them up, uh, adapter threads into here. So I just took these ones out and threaded our new ones in. Be careful on these, you don't wanna be torquing crazy and cracking I've seen it happen. Now we just gotta figure out how and where we wanna probably clamp it at least once up through there. Part of this kit has a simple solution for that as well. Comes with a couple of these clamps. I did not plan on using these from the start. Now I don't know why I didn't just use them from the start. Way simpler. Guarantee you we'd still be fighting and cussing that first line. I'm never gonna pop the hood on this thing anyhow, so I don't know why I'm too worried about all this. We need a bracket. Beep, beep, but bracket. Sound like a cheerleader. Clean up the rest of it with the wire wheel. Uh, quick, easy bracket made out of our old toolbox handle that we never used. A little bracket. <clears throat> bracket goes right there on the bottom of our motor mount. If you guys have ever heard that the last 10% takes 90% of the time, all this little crap is exactly what they're talking about. I think y'all can see where this is headed. Now she's flowing along. Clamped it. I like it. We did a better job on that than we did our TV cable. That paint was drying. I hopped up here, swapped out our TV cable for the new one. This one's made much better. It would not click in there. This metal's too thick. Where the retaining tab should be able to spread, the metal's too thick. So I took our little die grinder and just took a little off each side where they could separate where they could widen it, perfect. 
put it all back together how we had it before over here and i realized that it was pulled off that away i tried to flip the tab backwards and shift it over to this one but it has it out of alignment too the only way she's nice and straight how i'd like it is with those holes basically even with that edge okay you talked me into it we can weld it however before we do that we better figure out the throttle cable in case it needs some fabrication our new one came in uh one of these other little tabs that come with that bracket set clicks right on perfect and it looks like lining up with those is gonna be pretty dang good on this one let me go a little further back like so the problem with this sucker is <laughs> to get it through that hole we got to cut that off the back somehow or grind it down or something because i do not know how we're gonna hold that on the inside to the sander Let her shave down. Let's poke that through there. No, oh, careful. There, I thought I was being easy. That little hole, I was just drill it out to a quarter inch. I will do that and then put a quarter 20 bolt through there. Can't imagine someone buggered that hole up. What the heck, Cover? that drilled out slap a quarter 20 bolt I'm just doing mock-up right now I'll end up putting a nylock on that and then we'll snug it and we'll put that on and then we'll do another nylock to lock it on apparently we're gonna have to drill this out just a hair as well because getting a proper size screw was not an option There's a mock-up out here. All right, I got a lot of slack underneath here, and I don't think there's any way, any way around it. We're gonna have to cut it. Uh, our first mark's gonna be to know about where our edge is. I would think we would wanna leave a little coating on it to about right in there. So to have cable, we probably wanna cut it back in here and then strip off our second mark maybe <laughs> remember this bracket came with our little universal kit so now we're gonna line that up and cut it out to match this drill two holes we're gonna bolt this to that we're gonna use the clicky on thingy and other than figuring out our seal she should be pretty straightforward Y'all know the rest. Take her to the belt sander, clean it up, get some paint on it. Guys, it is, uh, it's already 5.30. I'm cleaning up real quick, just scrambling. I gotta go live in less than 30 minutes. I still gotta get the computer, TV, all that crap from the house to here. How's the whole day go by and I feel like I don't get nothing done? I don't know. It's part of building. We will push through. We will get some more dead back on her in the morning. Ah! See that? Caught it, crushed it open, one swoop. Let's keep the redneck flowing. Still gotta get a little redneck on this setup. We are gonna use one of these rubber caps. I think it's gonna work out good. Nice little hole right there. This is working out really good. Uh, what we should have done from the start, luckily, it ain't been too big of a pain to save. We don't really gotta worry about mounting that backside like you normally would because from that mount bracket to the very end of that cable is only seven inches. So of course that being a middle sleeve, it's pretty stiff. What I mean is we can sit here and pull this thing all day and uh, we really ain't gotta worry about this like shoving away from us. I can't even shove it away from us. Bolted our little bracket on. So all we'll have to do after this Go for a final mock-up. Get our little titty on here. That's beautiful. Mocked up. Mocked up. Huh? Huh? Whom, whom, whom. 
It looks good enough. It works great. It's gonna be sealed up. I like it. Let's make all this a little more permanent. If you watch Theo, you'll go blind. Well, that just tweaked real good. Didn't see that one coming. <laughs> I think this old Model A is gonna fight me to the very end, guys. She's mad at me. Well deserved. Shouldn't have put her off like I did. Do a little cutting on it, cut off her extra stuff. Bend that back to that. I'm gonna try to weld this all up, smooth her on out. Hopefully, we'll maintain enough strength in that. Here's how to easily wrap up 30, 40 minutes, I don't know, into another bracket or into our bracket. Welded her all up, half smooth her out. That's gonna be good enough. Uh, we could spend a lot of time really cleaning up them welds. I already have way too much time in this thing than what I wanted. However, I think that with all the excess cut off looks a heck of a lot better for a hot rod machine. Get her set up in the old paint booth here. Lay her on nice and thick. That'll help fill a couple of them little voids and uh, she'll look good with a little black paint. Boy, what a process this has been. Looky here, a uh, new belt came in. This one's gonna work, I think. Next up, we're gonna cut this sucker down. It's gonna work as our throttle re uh, return spring bracket, whatever. I don't know where this bracket's actually supposed to go, but I drilled a hole right there on the front and that's really all we need so we can cut the rest of that off. Just leave a little eyelet. The list of hardware we're gonna need grows and because of that, maybe we should start seeing what it's going to take to get the rest of our fuel system hooked up. Now this little bulkhead, I bought it off the Amazon. Pretty cool setup, got a quarter inch NPT threads on the inside and then some three quarter inch threads on the outside. Fits that uh, factory hole, just beautiful. We need another set of hands. Theo, come help me. We will turn that straight up and down. And when someone pops out here, We'll tighten her up a little more. Our little filter set up here was threaded into the front of this. I pulled it apart. Those are an eighth inch thread. Of course, ours are quarter inch. So we need to get stuff to go from that to this. Hopefully we ain't reducing it too much where she don't flow good for us. Uh, I know we're gonna, gravity will help fill this up and then push it down to the pump. Uh, it'd probably be better to put a filter after the pump but we already ran that line and i think this will look good over here so that's what we're going to try only problem is we need more hardware well fitting that one come out of there my collection my personal private collection 
did find a eighth to three eighths elbow. We did that. We could convert to a hose, which wouldn't look the greatest, but that's a single fitting. I don't want a bunch of bull crap off this. And that also turns it straight towards the motor. We could drop down. <laughs> Hold on. I'm not thinking this through, am I? That's where we want that. So then we can open it up and get fuel all over our painted firewall. We would have a bushing and a nipple that put it out about there. Uh, I don't know. Had to go to Ace, the helpful place. They now, now sell hot rod parts. Just playing, swung by the O'Reilly's too since we were there. Uh, they're close to each other. Got some of the little odds and ends of what we need. I hate having to make them trips because you lose so much time, but we can't actually finish none of this stuff unless we get the stuff we have to have to finish it. Like our little bracket set up here, we needed nylocks. You need the nylock so when you put it on there, there's not enough threads left when you put that on there for another nylock. So then you gotta go to a longer bolt, but then your bolt won't actually fit in there from behind, you know? Just the real simple stuff to finish a project. <laughs> you hold your tongue just right, you can get it in there. Tighten that, a little bit of play. And we finally have it wrapped up. It was a lot of work, guys, it really was. Uh, but that looks good. Very happy with how that looks. I'm also very happy with how it feels. She is a little stiff, so we may end up getting a softer spring eventually, but for now, no problem. Inside our little extra cable, I'm gonna put us a piece of heat shrink on this sucker. These cables uh, start, cable starting to unwind down there. So we're gonna take it up this way. Want that to cool off. That one's got the glue in it, so I'm hoping we can then snip that and it don't make a total mess out of the end of that cable. She looks good too. It's sealed up. It ain't gonna leak like the rod was going to. It ain't gonna bind like the rod was going to. Overall, much better solution. So Uncle Pudding got in his bag of goodies. Alternator spacer. Bingo. Our alternator bolt. Ditch those two washers. One thicken. Professional. Before uh, we put this on, let's plug this and this. Oh yeah, since we got our 9 sixteenths, don't forget these. Never seen that before. Plug's going down and the thread tape was coming right back up it. What the heck? Just anything at this point to not let me make fast progress. You ever seen anything like that? Try again. Uh, we're gonna elect for no heater in this rig. So if it's that cold, I probably won't be driving this anyhow. So we're pretty much gonna plug off all of our ports, except this one. We'll save it for our temperature, uh, temp gauge. This 3 8 plugs for a vacuum. It's off our intake manifold here. Uh, we don't have anything that's gonna require that. We also need to plug back of our carburetor. Usually you'd come off of one of these and go over to your vacuum booster, which we do not have. Next, we're gonna hook up some of this stuff. Bought one of these chrome jobbers. It does not come with a grommet, which I don't understand. There's the type you want right there. It's kind of baffled in the bottom. And it works as a check valve. That one there is just a plug. Your high performance section usually sells a couple different options there. This one comes with a plug and one for our PCV valve we're gonna put on the driver's side. Gosh darn, just added 10 horsepower. These grommets are tough. And this side, we're going PCV valve. And we're gonna whoop, wrap that right up here. Cap that. Go ahead and put on our vacuum advance here from this side of the LD Brock. Of course, run that on back there. 
Oh yeah, looking good. I'm trying to rip up our fuel here. I did have help with my bulk kit earlier. Here at Putnam's Plumbing, if them old fittings ain't a fitting, we'll give it a little hot to you spitting, and then they'll maybe fit. We ain't bullshitting. Ain't gonna work. <laughs> Actually, it is gonna work. I just had to put our little elbow in our uh, fuel tank first. I'm hoping that can stay face that away and off that straight barb. We can just run a hose to a 90 here. Then right there, we've got our fuel cut off. And facing that way is kind of tucked up underneath there where you don't see her so much. Just about got that tightened up and our bulkhead spun. So I got to re-tighten that up, which means I need a, another set of extra hands. At least with this out here, we can uh, make our other hard line. I do have a roll of this stuff, same color and everything. The only thing is, with this being up top, we want it nice and straight to match our other one. So I did get another pre-made line because this stuff is nice and straight. Woo, not bad for guessing. This thing, this 3 8 to bend is no joke with that little thing. It actually takes some strength to do it. <clears throat> I think this might be another thing where people are like, mm, I ain't too sure about that. As I get my zip ties out. Once again, knowing we're probably gonna never pop the hood anyhow. One stuff easy, uh, easy to service, easy to work on pretty happy with this. People just ain't gonna like my little rubber hose here, but that's all right. Make our clamps match and index them the same. That'll make it look good. And yeah, we're flying down along there. And right down there, I kind of jogged over from that one. And from here up to there, we're gonna uh, throw our filter down here. That dipstick was uh, too easy to get to, so I just figured we could add that vacuum advance right on top of it and another fuel line. Put that fuel filter right there. This we will not be using. And we might have to manipulate on her some after radiator hose. And uh, we can do that by just bending right there. We got a fuel system, folks. Just playing. We almost got a fuel system, folks. As soon as we can tighten that up, I'll finish tightening our one fitting here. Piece of hose from that barb to that barb. I'll take care of that when I get someone out here to help me. Set our breather on just where we could kind of see a wrap up of all the crap that's been whooping me this week and i'm happy with our progress y'all see that brown box well you remember at the very beginning when we measured our drive shaft uh that came in yesterday like at i don't know one o'clock that thing came in quick look at it split when i stopped at the parts house i tried to get us some of these uh some new ones that had the flat side like that but they didn't have them with the flat side and i want the flat ones so i ordered us some Need a little all thread where we can hold that breather down. Ooh, she's a little spicy, a little trim to fit. We are gonna leave the radiator off of it. We'll leave the radiator off of her. Uh, if she does have an appointment with the exhaust shop next week. We're pretty close to being able to fire the sucker up. I and mean, that is how you cut your all thread too short. thing is before we fire it up i want to be able to hear the motor and uh obviously we're gonna have to break her in and to do that i, I want to be able to hear if this motor has to come out of here on this car specifically it would be a nightmare so like on our wagon we broke it in uh with it being open exhaust like that and kind of rolled the dice Come to find out, we broke that one in with it running on seven cylinders and couldn't really hear any different. 
So our Model A, we're going to uh, wait to do it till we have exhaust. So I want this on here because we're going to be trailering her across town looking like this. Guys, that's going to wrap it up for now. Our drive shaft, pinion angles. Well, we can't even check pinion angle right now. Here's where I'm at. Here's, here's the uh, next set of ch challenges. It may be sitting too low right now. I know it looks awesome, but we want to be able to drive this thing and not rub our fenders with our tires and stuff. The vehicle may have to come up just a hair. Uh, it definitely needs some different front shocks. Check this out. Since we have the axle on there, these things are bottomed out. There's no travel in this front at all right now. Now we can get shorter shocks and we probably will have to, but even after doing that, everything may just have to bump up just a hair. So I need to talk to the Bowling Brothers about that, kind of uh, pick some of their brains on where we're at on it. And then once we get it sitting right, then we can lock in pinion angle. Once pinion angle's locked in, then we can install our drive shaft. So we really do no good to try to slap that in there without the proper U-bolts and stuff anyhow. Uh, after that, and after some exhaust is on it, really we get a radiator slapped in, hook up, or four hoses or lines that'll go to it and a little bit of wiring we'll be able to fire this bad girl up guys i'm gonna leave the floor out of it until we full break everything in that way we can get to our transmission and all that if we need to and yeah guys we're, we're getting close i really only had two and a half days of work on this and i didn't plan on losing a day of that to redoing a throttle cable thing but it's okay i'm not mad at my progress like i said 90 percent of the work is in the last 10 percent of a real detailed build this one ain't super detailed but it's detailed enough you can tell uh this little stuff will just pick away at you so if we can get to the point where we have a good uh like four days we can stay hooked up on it i think we could make a lot of progress on it the only other the only other the only other thing I can think of that's going to be a little tricky is getting our hood mounted because where one of these brackets go, we're going to have to drill and tap the frame or something. I don't quite remember the details there. Hopefully it don't end up biting us in the butt too much. And I got to decide what gauges we're going to run on the inside. Um, I do not want to butcher up our dash with gauges. Um, so I got to make a decision on do we just leave that stuff and drop a oil temp and uh or oil pressure and a temperature gauge and just run those that's all i really care about i'm very good at judging the speed that i'm driving uh so many of my vehicles have either never had a working speedo the speedo cables broke or i just never cared to fix it or whatever i just described half my fleet now uh so every time i check my what I think I'm driving at versus the Speedo app I have on my phone, I'm always dead on. So I'm not too worried about one of them. I just don't know where it would go in here. You got a gas tank behind here so you can't cut into there. And this is super shallow. Uh, so we could either expand that some. But I don't know, Speedos are deep. You got the cable that would have to come up. I don't know what we're going to do. I did find a GPS one that's pretty shallow, but I don't like how it looks. So we're probably just going to run no Speedo like a man would. No Speedo, no heater. It's just an old jalopy beater, baby. That's all we need. So I appreciate you guys being here. Uh, we've been doing a lot of Will It Run uh, junkyard kind of stuff. Even working on a little bit of the stuff in our own inventory out there. Uh, but some of y'all wanted to see some more Model A action. I was ready to get back on it, kind of get a sense of where we're at and what do we need. And prog progress is progress, and I'm happy with where we're at. This thing's shaping up to be a beautiful car. So thank you guys for being here. Thanks for all the support. Uh, it's 5 o'clock already, which is crazy. We're taking Grandma on a train ride in the morning. She's always wanted to ride a train, so the whole family's taking her on a train ride to like Fort Worth and back or something. I don't know what's happening. I'm just along for the ride. So I got to get this place cleaned up. Uh, so puttingsfabshop.com for all that good quality merchandise. We appreciate all support there. I'm on the Instagrammer. I'm on the Facebooker. I'm on the Patreon. 
and I will see you guys next time. However, do not forget, sitting on your ass will not finish your project. And if your project starts pushing back, guys, don't let it defeat you. Just work through them little, little details, okay? Grind through.